All right. So um, not much new here. We've just been shipping a ton of stuff. Uh, the usual, you know, the night before the town hall, I do my, you know, Git history mining <clears throat> and I go on GitHub and Maggie comes up with some numbers and I come up with some slightly different numbers. And then we kind of uh, figure out what the right number is. But here's what it is. Uh, we had 180 plus PRs merged over the last uh, month. Um, around that you know, 200 commits per month mark, um, substantial increase over where we were a year ago, about 100 commits a month. A uh, lot of committers, too many uh, to actually uh, uh, talk about, but the nice thing I'm noticing repeatedly is every single time there's like a cohort of you know, 30 to 35 like kind of repeat offenders, <laughs> people who like data hub so much, they wanna improve it, and so that's great. And then every single time there are new people that are joining the flock. And so this is amazing to see. Um, we continue to grow and also deepen uh, our relationships with people who are making the project move forward. Uh, in terms of uh, improvements, as usual, a uh, lot of um, uh, improvements in the metadata integration section. I'm super happy that we were finally able to get the Feast connector merged in. It was uh, sitting for a while and I had to do some deep surgery on it to get it finally in. So now we support, I mean, the previous one already supported Feast, but it was the pre protobuf Feast version. So now it's up to pretty much the latest. And the Feast community is actually digging in and uh, helping us build better connectors. So it's gonna be amazing. Um, so try it out. It's gonna be out in the next uh, release uh, in the next day or so. So zero, it's compatible with Feast 0 .0 0 0.18. Uh, we also have uh, a new S3 connector that we talked about last time. Uh, try it out and give us feedback. We are pretty close to deprecating the data lake connector, uh, the one uh, that preceded it. Uh, so we'd love to get some feedback from the community on that particular one so that we can move this into supported status. Um, Maggie talked about Presto on Hive, that's new. Um, Airflow run level info as demoed in town hall is now in. Uh, so try out the new Airflow integration. We did a bunch of uh, work on DBT. Uh, actually, one thing that I'm really excited about is uh, the work we did on query tag mapping. So DBT has a meta section. It also has a query tag section. Uh, and now we support mapping both of those sections um, and also allow variable interpolation. So you, instead of you know, writing out your uh, case statements by hand, you can actually map, uh, you can say everything that's in a particular section in the dbt meta becomes a tag. Uh, highly uh, encourage checking out um, the new support there. On the dev experience and the platform, it's hard to combine these things together, but uh, we ended up doing it for, for space. A uh, lot of improvements to the CLI. You'll see simpler error messages so hopefully not as many stack traces coming back at you when simple things go wrong. Um, in the latest release, the sync is actually completely optional. So you can just describe the source and Data Hub is just gonna automatically connect to the uh, default sync. So a lot of simplifications there, hopefully that reduces a, a lot of starter uh, problems that people have. Uh, John did a lot of amazing work on the authorizer interface. Um, this was really cool. Uh, so now you can actually plug in a configurable authorizer for GMS. And the G research team in London actually contributed a very cool PR. Um, it's basically replacing the metadata storage layer with Cassandra. So uh, as you know, by default, uh, Data Hub comes up with like MySQL or RDS or Postgres as kind of the metadata storage layer. A lot of people want to put a lot of metadata in their back in their uh, Data Hub and they want to really scale out the storage layer. So G research um, firm based in London contributed the Cassandra layer. Hopefully in the next town hall, they can actually come on and talk a little bit about it. That's gonna be amazing. And we're, we're gonna publish better docs so that you can start playing around with it if you have a distributed system like Cassandra uh, in your uh, company. Product improvements, uh, view-based RBAC policies have landed, um, research search terms, we demoed it last time. And we'll talk about ML entities and uh, a few um, UI improvements that we've done there. All right, next slide. Um, Data Lake fans rejoice. We have Apache Hoodie and Apache Iceberg, both kind of making moves. Uh, Hoodie uh, release 0.11.0 is getting voted on. So in a couple of weeks, they'll actually release their push-based integration with Data Hub, which means every time a Hoodie commit happens, an event gets emitted and Data Hub gets to know about it. This, this is the kind of integrations we love. Uh, Apache Iceberg, um, Eric's uh, PR is very close to be merged. Uh, we have done all of the work on releasing the PyPy packages that he needed 
Uh, so it's very close to merge ready. Hopefully in the next day or two, we should be able to get the iceberg integration also done. This will be pull based, obviously using the, the standard connector uh, set. Next slide, uh, schema history, we demoed it in the town hall. It's finally here, um, as in it'll be available in the release that goes out tomorrow. Uh, we made a bunch of small improvements post the last town hall in terms of also giving you as of queries on not just the schema, but also tags and terms. So when you get into that blame view and you look at a particular version of a schema, you're not only seeing what the structure of the schema looked like at that point in time, but you're also doing seeing what the tags were at that point in time, as well as the glossary terms that were attached at that point in time, as well as the documentation, including editable schema for people who are in the weeds and understand the difference between schema metadata and editable schema metadata. So that's what we consider like a shippable MVP first milestone for schema history. What will come right after that is the diff view and then the timeline view. So stay tuned for improvements there. Uh, this is going to ship in 0833. Um, next up is Airflow updates. Uh, we've released run level info. Um, so that's already available. You can see this now. And um, Tamash has some quick updates on support for MWAA, which has been um, uh, a pain point for us, honestly, because of uh, the lack of uh, out of the box integration with Airflow lineage backend. So Tamash, over to you. Yeah, hi everyone. So I'm going to quickly run through what changes happening uh, with Airflow. And uh, just a quick update, how we are currently capturing these run level info. Uh, basically we are using uh, Airflow's lineage backend. There are uh, some problems with the lineage backend. One problem is that currently how it works actually, uh, when it collects the lineage uh, info, it's basically uh, hooked to the post execute method callback in Airflow, which only get called, uh, gets called uh, if the run was successful. If the task run was uh, failed, you can see uh, actually these run info on data hub because the, uh, the, basically the apply lineage uh, method won't get called by Airflow. <clears throat> and another problem, of course, with that, it's currently, it's very hard to set it up and maybe even you can set it up for MD, uh, so for managed Airflow, uh, the current lineage backend. So we were thinking how to solve both problem and one solution actually for uh, the callback issue. Basically, if it could hook on uh, the on success callback or the on failure callback, we could get uh, reliable if a task fails or succeeds, and also we can get reliable uh, this, uh, the end time of the task run. And also, uh, and uh, but, but to add these on success and on failure callback, we needed some kind of solution just to make sure you don't have to manually or add or instrument all your decks. And this way, uh, we figured out there is a way that which we, we can provide uh, with, uh, with an Airflow plugin, a custom Airflow plugin, what you can uh, provide and uh, basically in these airflow plugin we are just setting uh, cluster policies which basically what it does in in short that you can get all the uh, task uh, templates and basically you can hook on uh, uh, or in instrument all the tasks in all the decks uh, with with your method if you want and that, that's exactly what we do here with the plugin basically we get we are getting all the decks or the tasks and basically adding uh, on success and on uh, an on failure to collect the lineage info and the run info as well. And of course, uh, when we finish with this, we will call the original uh, on success and on failure method if set. And why it's great because with a plugin, you can easily set it up for uh, like manage that flow. The only thing what you need to do, it's basically one way to set it up. It's basically uh, putting the plugin in a zip file and just uh, putting on S3 and setting up for Manage that flow, or the other way, but uh, which will be available soon as well. Uh, it's basically uh, installing it through PyPy as a uh, as a Python plugin. And another thing, what you need to do in the config is basically enabling uh, or disabling the lazy load plugins, just to make sure the plugin is loaded when Airflow starts up. And just a quick demo how it looks like. Let me share my screen. And basically, if I go here, so I just need to move my zoom controls. But if I come here and like, uh, this is a managed airflow, 
uh, Amazon Manage their flow, you can see that like the second, first plugin is our, our plugin, and the second plugin is basically the Manage their flow uh, plugin, which is, uh, I, I guess, installed by Amazon. And if you just go to the DAX, and, and I will be able to click on that, yes. And I go to the example lineage. And actually, you should know that there are no lineage backend set up at all, actually. Uh, here, the only if we what we installed is the data hub plugin and those two configuration settings that I showed uh, before. And if I just trigger a run, then it's basically these two tasks needs to be passed, and the last one needs to be failed just to make sure that uh, that you can see that this failure actually happening. If I uh, then if I would go to here and I just refresh my screen, oh. One sec. Then hopefully it will load. Oh. Okay. Give me one sec. This is the last day. It's not the image. And this one. And if I just the film. And I go to the runs, then you should see here uh, the failed run and also the inputs of these runs. And if you click the view task run details, then it should bring you to to the manage that flow. And there you can see the logs. And and for this, actually, we are using the same. So you 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 should uh, to to get capture uh, data sets like input and output. You still need to set up inlets and outlets because we are still using the lineage uh, API, but we are not using the lineage backend to collect these things. Actually, that's it from my side. <laughs>